Yeah, no, that's a great question. And I think one is to separate between short-term, mid-term, and long-term. And, and let me explain what I mean by that. In, in the short term, first of all, it's important to understand we're talking about something that we've never seen before, which is both a demand shock in the economy, but also a supply shock. And so places and people are afraid to go and work. And in fact, I know that there are many Uber drivers that even before the lockdown said, well, I'm not going to put anyone in my car if there is a very high chance that that person uh, may uh, have corona. And at the same time, we have significant demand shock because people are not going out, people are not going to, to work. And so when we see, when we're going to see everything being easing out, the shelter in place, um, I don't think we're going to see an immediate demand for this gig economy uh, type of work, not for Airbnb, by the way, not for Uber. At the same time, I think people, once they're going to start thinking about it more, they will say, "Where shall I? Do I want to spend time in a random hotel room, or do I want to spend time in an apartment that I know that was cleaned? Do I want to go to an Uber, or do I want really to go to the subway?" And so I think over time, and and what I am optimistic here is that everybody is going to innovate, and I and I suspect that drivers are going to be faster to innovate than um, you know the, the subway in New York. And so right. we're going to see that being easing out. Now, when I talk about long term, I think w what we're going to see is, in fact, I think a resurgence of the gig economy, but much broader than just Uber and Lyft and the like. And the reason for that, we are talking about 30% unemployment. Where do people are going to work? I mean, they will have to somehow find solutions. Instacart, for example, they're looking to hire 300 thousand people they cannot i mean if you're looking for a slot for, for for grocery delivery in new york you cannot find anything before the end of may right so yeah. a, again i think there, there are specific businesses that we see huge resurgence and rely on gig economy others not so much but that's not one of the parts of the gig economy that is exciting to me is or at least i see it as a, as valuable with all the different shortcomings of that don't get me wrong I mean, there are many many issues with that that we need to address as a society but right. one of the benefits, it's actually much easier to mobilize people from one to another. And people are not, because otherwise what we see, people are just getting fired from full-time jobs. To some extent, that's the way I think about the economy overall of what we see now. We see two types of trends, trends that were actually accelerating anyway, or increasing anyway, and will be accelerated by what, by the corona. It might be it will hit a few snags, but ultimately will be accelerated. I think the 30% unemployment, not about the corona, but the 30% unemployment is absolutely going to increase the, the prominence of gig economy, supply and demand side. At the same time, there are things that are actually, we see a decrease and, and, and most likely will disappear. And, and, and that, a, or at least getting more and more a, a attention during this time, but ultimately will disappear. And so I think that's not like where, where we're struggling now is what, the thing we see are these parts of these trends or are these more like temporary things that are related to this time now, just to the corona? It's hard to say a little bit. I think one of the main struggles for many of these gig economy firms is that they've been relying heavily on growth. Right? The, the entire valuation yeah. is based on growth. They will have to get used to the idea that it might be that for a year, they will be primarily shrinking. And that you see already line 20, a, a firing 20% of their people, Lyft firing people. These are firms that are relatively lean and invest heavily in marketing growth, and they will not be able to do that. Right. And the question here is, will we see some of these firms actually potentially stopping to exist, leaving really the market to a winner take all, which we've not seen happening? And so that's going to be the question that I think is interesting here, is I don't know what the new normal, and I'm not sure when it's going to come, and some of these firms don't have the cash to exist until the new normal. They may need to extend primarily their existence until we actually see a new reality, because the new reality might actually happen only in Q2 2021, um, primarily because even though we see more and more places opening, I think we will see more of a, an accordion kind of a, a reality where we open the economy, things flare up, then we tighten things up. So if you're trying to, if you're going to see the first signal and, and as a way of growth, as a signal of growth, 
we might see some of that in july, you you you're, you're up for a very big disappointment i think in, in september.